On the 24th of October 2001, two trucks entered the Gotthard Road Tunnel in Switzerland. One from the northern end, and one from the southern end. Minutes later, the two vehicles would meet in a violent collision, starting a raging fire inside one of the longest continuous road tunnels in the world. The St. Gotthard Pass has been in use since the 1200s. It consists of a dangerous, mountainous route that connects northern Switzerland with southern Switzerland over a rugged mountain range. For many centuries, the pass was so hazardous a route that it was available only in the late summer of each year, with the path either flooded with meltwater or obstructed by snow and ice for the remainder of the year. Naturally, in the 1800s, as trade became ever more important, the idea of a tunnel was conceived. A tunnel would make the journey from the village of Gershenen at one end of the pass to the municipality of Arolo at the other significantly easier and shorter, and would make the route usable for a much larger part of the year. Thus, in 1882, after a decade of hard labour, the Gotthard Tunnel was opened. It was a railway tunnel, with steam-powered locomotives running back and forth with cargo and passengers. In the 1900s, with automobile ownership steadily increasing, trains running through the tunnel began carrying cars and trucks as well. In 1969, the Swiss government responded to growing demand for a dedicated road tunnel, and authorised the construction of the Gotthard Road Tunnel parallel to the existing rail line. Work was completed in 1980. The finished tunnel consisted of two lanes, one for traffic running north, and one for traffic running south. There was also a much smaller safety gallery alongside the main tunnel. This was connected to the main tunnel at several points, but had its own independent ventilation system. In the event of an emergency, the safety gallery would allow the tunnel to be evacuated, but it was also constructed in order to lay the groundwork for a further carriageway, should the tunnel ever need to be widened. At the time, the tunnel was one of the longest in the world. At 16.9 kilometers or 10.5 miles, it would take around 15 minutes for most cars to travel from one portal to the other, during which time they would pass under the Gotthard Massif mountain range. The tunnel would form part of a wider road network that would allow freight to be driven from Germany to Italy entirely on major highways. After opening on the 5th of September 1980, the new road tunnel soon became a crucial route for freight and passenger traffic. In the 1990s, more than a thousand heavy goods trucks would routinely pass through the tunnel every hour at peak times. On the 24th of October 2001, two heavy goods trucks in particular entered the tunnel. One was a Belgian vehicle, travelling north from Merolo with a cargo of clothes, textiles and photographic film. The other was an Italian truck, travelling south from Gershenen with a cargo of rubber tyres. This truck made it almost all the way to the end of the tunnel, with only 1.2 kilometres or 0.74 miles left to travel when the accident took place. The Belgian truck ran into the wall of the tunnel and then swerved across the carriageway. The Italian truck attempted to avoid a collision by slowing down and moving aside, but was unable to do so. The two massive vehicles smashed into one another, with the Italian truck skewing across the roadway until it completely blocked the tunnel. The Italian truck driver, a man named Bruno Saba, survived the collision. He left his mangled vehicle and began moving towards the relatively nearby southern tunnel portal, encouraging drivers to turn around and leave the tunnel as he did so. While he did this, fuel leaked from the two damaged trucks and suddenly ignited. Because the short length of tunnel south of the accident had been cleared so quickly, the fire service was able to reach the site within just seven minutes. Reaching the fire was one thing, but extinguishing it was quite another. The cargo of rubber tyres on board the Italian truck was burning fiercely, producing thick black smoke. The heat was so great that firefighters approaching from the south struggled to get close enough to tackle the fire. Meanwhile, firefighters were also attempting to approach from the north, but were facing different difficulties. 
The ventilation system within the tunnel sent smoke billowing northward, moving, according to surviving witnesses, at the same speed as an avalanche. As fuel spilled onto the roadway, the fire spread too, engulfing several more heavy goods vehicles and their cargo. The heat close to the accident site climbed so high that many affected vehicles fused together. One survivor later described the experience. Suddenly, there was smoke. I couldn't see a thing. I tried to reverse like many others, but it was not possible. It was chaotic. I left the truck and felt my way along the wall of the tunnel until I reached an emergency exit. It was very, very hot. There was smoke everywhere. Some drivers to the north of the accident were able to turn their vehicles around and drive out of the tunnel. Others left their vehicles and either fled on foot or ducked into emergency refuges that were spaced evenly along the length of the tunnel. From these fireproof safe havens, they were later rescued by emergency personnel who guided them out along the adjacent safety gallery. Though the refuges potentially saved as many as 30 lives, not everyone escaped unscathed. Many people suffered injuries, including smoke inhalation. 11 people were killed, almost all of them in an area around 300 meters, or 328 yards, to the north of the accident. It appeared that those who were close enough to witness the accident either turned around or fled to a refuge without hesitation. Those who were just a little further north and thus did not directly witness the accident were more likely to hesitate before evacuating, sometimes at the cost of their lives. Though he survived the collision, the Belgian truck driver was amongst the dead. He was found in the main carriageway of the tunnel, a short distance north of the accident. The fire was eventually brought under control, and the tunnel was assessed for damage. Some concrete ceiling slabs had fallen onto the vehicles below, and there was significant smoke damage, but it appeared that the tunnel could be repaired. It was decided that the tunnel should be reopened as soon as possible, as it was a vital arterial route for freight and passengers. While repairs were carried out, good weather meant that the St. Gotthard Pass could remain open for the entire time that the road tunnel was unavailable. Trains passing through the Gotthard Tunnel also carried vehicles during this period. After an investigation and repairs, the Gotthard Road Tunnel reopened to traffic in December 2001, just two months after the accident. Efficient working practices, such as using contractors already familiar with the tunnel, meant that it had also been possible to carry out some improvement works to the ventilation and lighting systems during this time. Though the fire had been a deadly one, it was recognised that the accident could have been much worse. The existence of refuges and the prompt evacuation of drivers who witnessed or were close to the accident were credited with reducing the death toll. When the tunnel did reopen, the transit of heavy goods vehicles was limited. Initially, trucks could only pass in one direction, and later their numbers were limited to just 150 per hour with traffic control systems establishing separation distance between heavy goods vehicles. Within the tunnel, lighting and signage was also improved, with the refuges made more obvious and furnished with information on how to behave when sheltering inside one. New technology has since been employed to reduce fire risk. Firefighters are specially trained and use specially formulated firefighting materials and trucks entering the tunnel at either end are screened for overheating components before they enter. In 2016, another tunnel was opened. The Gotthard Base Tunnel is a railway tunnel that carries both passengers and freight. By transporting trucks on a train, the potential for accidental collisions is eliminated, and the environmental impact is also reduced. With traffic still increasing year on year, it has been decided that the Gotthard Road Tunnel will also be upgraded, with a second tunnel added running alongside the first. This new carriageway is due to be completed in the late 2020s. Thanks to changes made in the wake of the Gotthard Road Tunnel fire of 2001, 
this new tunnel will be not just one of the longest in the world, but also one of the safest.